Hey everyone, my name is Riley and this video is a complete tutorial on fresh sales. I will be covering absolutely everything that you need to know when it comes to fresh sales in a simple and easy to follow way. If you do not yet have a fresh sales account, you can click on the first link down in the description and sign up for a free trial. Once you have clicked on that link, you will be taken over to this page right here where you can claim your fresh sales free trial. So all we need to do is click on start your free trial and then we can sign up with either Google or via email. From here, this is going to take us into the Freshworks dashboard. So I am on the dashboard right here and this that you can see in front of you is currently a sample report. So at the top here, we can see pipeline trend. So this is going to show us the amount of deals created. The deals won is in green and then the deals lost is in orange. So we can come straight in here into the dashboard and this is going to show us an overview of how our entire CRM is looking. We can also see total bookings this month, total leads this month, how many leads we have generated each month. We have the month leaderboard, which shows us all of our different team members and how much in deals they have closed. We then have a forecast for the month, an opportunity pipeline and a sales goal. Now let's go ahead and dismiss this and get into the real data right here. And this is how our dashboard looks right now. Of course, we do not have any data in here because this is a fresh new account. So let's actually go in and start creating some data for this. If we go over to the left hand side, this is going to take us over to the contact area and you can see some sample contacts that we have right here. So in this section, this is where we are going to be listed all of the different contacts that we have, as well as the contacts email, their work phone number, the activities that are to do with this lead. We then have a score for each lead and the way this is determined is shown if we hover over this. So right now we can see for J, we have a score of 12. And the reason this score is only a 12 is because he is not subscribed to SMS subscription. We have not contacted this lead. We have never sent an email to this lead. He's not subscribed to WhatsApp and we've never received an email. So right here, this really doesn't look like a good lead. However, if we go to Laura, she has quite a good score here at 47. The reason is because this city is Toronto, the country is Canada, the account city and account is effectively the business. So this means this business is set up in Toronto. That's also boosting this score. The business type is a customer and the job title is sales executive. So this means that Laura has quite a high score and she is much more likely to close or become a client than Jay judging from this score. We also have tags that we can add to each contact. We can see the sales owner right here or who is in charge of this lead as well as a status and the company that they work for. So let's go through and take a deeper dive into each of these leads. We can see if we hover over each of these leads, we can open up to see more details. We can send them an email, give them a phone call if their number is added, add a task, add a note, or go to this section right here where we have a few more options. Let's go ahead and open this up for Jay so that we can get a much more in detailed view of this specific lead. Up at the top here, this is where we can set a life cycle stage. So we can choose between a lead, a sales qualified lead or a customer. We can also change the status right here and we can also choose a reason if this lead was lost. Down here, we can add a location, change the company, add the email, change the sales owner or who is in charge of this lead, as well as adding a mobile number for this lead. On this right hand side, we can add a note. So we already have a note here. This was left five days ago by Riley Holden, who is a member of this team. And he said he reached out to Jay, but he did not respond. In here, anytime you get in contact with a lead or you have something to say about this lead, you can enter a note in here. So let's say hypothetically that I just gave Jay a call. He answered and he seemed interested. So what I can do here is change all of these different settings. So first of all, I'm going to change this from a lead to a qualified lead. We can then go to the status and tag him as qualified. And this is now updated. We can then go over to add a note. And in here, I can add a note to say that I just had a call with Jay and he's interested in our market marketing services. Down here, this is where we can add open deals associated with Jay, any upcoming meetings, any emails that were sent, and we can also add them to a sales sequence. 
So I'm going to go ahead and let's add a deal here with J. So J is already in the related contact. We can then add related account. So this is the business he works for. The deal type, let's tag this as new. And then in the deal name, let's call this eCorp Marketing. We can then add the deal value right here. Let's say this is $10,000. And in the deal stage, let's have this as qualification. We can then save all of this and that is going to update and add this into deals. Now the deal section is something we will get into later, but for now, let's keep playing around with Jay's contact information. So if we go back to the overview, this is where we were set before. We can also add meetings right here. So if I click into add meeting, I can go ahead and add a meeting with Jay. So let's title this as a sales call. We can then choose the date and time that this is. So let's say this is next Friday at 1 p.m. We can also set the time zone. And then right here, this is where we can add video conferencing. So we can connect up Zoom or connect Teams to take our calls. I'm going to select Zoom. This is then going to take me over to Zoom and I can connect up Zoom so that I can add this in with the call with Jay. Under location, I would then tag this as Zoom and I can then add a description right here about this call. From here, we can then click on save and we now have this meeting saved. Over here on the left hand side, we can go into contact details to get a better idea of Jay's contact details. Any recent conversations, so any emails that have been going back and forward, we will see right here. We can also send an email on this left hand side. So right here, you would have to connect a Gmail account. We can connect Gmail or connect a different email. And then once your Gmail or email account is connected, you will be able to email these leads straight from Fresh Sales. So we could create a subject right here. Let's title this marketing proposal. And then we can go down here, start typing this email out. And then once the email is ready, we can hit send and send out this email. We can also go down to activities on this left hand side and see all of the recent activities relating to Jay. So we can see today on the 9th of February, we created this deal. We also updated the life cycle stage and we've scheduled in this sales call. We then have this sales call coming for upcoming activities and we can see when this sales call is as well as where this sales call is going to take place. Down in accounts, this is where we can see any companies that this person is related to. So for Jay, he works at eCorp. And then at the bottom here, we can upload any files or any documents that are relevant to Jay. So let's now go back out. And that is how you can add relevant information, set up sales calls and meetings within certain contacts. We can also email people directly from this menu right here by simply clicking on this email. And then we can write an email to Jay right here. We can also add tasks. So I could add a task right here. So I can have this as email J, type a description and then type out a due date and save this as a task. In this next activity section, this is going to show us the nearest activity that we have to do relating to this deal. Earlier on, I set up a sales call relating to J. So in this activity section, we have a sales call right here. Now this sales call is on the 16th of February. If we created a new task or activity that was before the 16th of February, that would show up in the next activity section. Then moving on to score, we've already talked about the key factors behind the score. However, we can also go up, customize and edit these different signals. So right now, some of the signals that go for positive is the country, the industry type, email and phone. In my opinion, this doesn't really make sense and the country that somebody or the business is set up in isn't really going to affect how likely that deal is to close. So instead, we can click into add signal and add our own signals in here. So in here, let's add a signal. We can then choose between contact property, primary account property, engagement and events. So let's go for engagement and in here, let's select this as meetings. This now means that the more meetings we have with this person, the more positively this is going to affect the signal. So let's set this to 30 days and click on save. And right now we have set this. So if we have had any meetings with Jay in the last 30 days, this is going to act as a positive signal. And we can also set up negative signals in the same way. We also have automations down here. So by default, this is if they get a score that is greater than 70, then we can add a tag that is likely to buy to the contact. So we can edit this entire area right here under the score section. 
Next under tags, this is where we can create and add different tags to help us filter these different sections. So let's click into tag and because we haven't got any tags created right now, none of these tags are going to show up. But let's tag J with the tag of marketing, then we can add this. This tag is now added and J is going to show up under marketing. This becomes super useful when you have a lot of different contacts and what we can do is go up to filter by and then filter by tag. And then in here, we can choose between all of the different tags that we currently have. So if I set this to marketing and apply, this is only going to show people with the tag of marketing, which in this example is J. We then have this sales owner section. So we can click into this and choose the team member that is in charge of this lead. Right now, I do not have any other team members on my account. So this is just going to be with me. We can then also change the status right here and then the account that they work for. So that is contact right there. Let's actually go ahead and remove this filter. And just like that, that's going to bring everybody back. We can add new contacts using this button in the top right corner. And then we can go through, enter in the information, such as the first name, last name, company that they work for, their email, mobile number, and all of this information. As soon as we create a lead, they will show up in the lead section right here. We can also import contacts using this button right here. And we can choose if we want to import contacts from a spreadsheet, Google contact, or any other CRM that you might be using and switching over to fresh sales from. Next, let's go over to accounts. This is very similar to the contact section. However, this is going to show us all of the businesses that we are potentially doing business with. So all of the businesses are going to be listed here. We then have related contacts, the website, open deal amount, sales owner, next activity, tags, and fun. So all of these different sections at the top are very similar. Once again, we can go in here and edit the details in the same way. We can once again see activity timeline. We can add notes down here. We can add particular tasks, add in any meetings that we need to add in. And that is how you can use the accounts area. Next under deals, this is where we can get a full overview of our current sales pipeline. So right here, we have the categories of new, qualification, discovery, demo, negotiation, and one. And as these deals travel through the pipeline, as we get in contact, as these deals progress, we can simply come in here and move these along the pipeline. So with eCorp, this is now a discovery call. We can then move this into demo. And then when we win this deal or lose the deal, we can drop it into these two areas right here. Let's drop this into one. And then it's going to ask us for confirmation. So when was this deal closed? We can click on save and it's now going to show up in this one section right here. Let's refresh to make sure this loads in. And just like that, this is going to show up under the one area right here. We can also customize the name of these deal cards. So the one that is given by default is pretty basic and pretty broad. But what we can do is click into settings right here, go to edit pipeline right here. And then in this section, we can go ahead and change the deal stage. So once again, let's say this is a marketing agency. I can have this first one as new. Then we can go for discovery call. Then let's change this next section to sales call. Then we can have invoice sent. And for this last section for negotiation, let's just go ahead and delete this. Then we have closing stages, one and lost. I wouldn't really change this. Then we can click on save. And this section is going to update right here. So we now have new discovery call, sales call. And then as these leads move throughout these different stages, we can update this and keep track of how our current sales pipeline is looking. We can also change the view of this from a pipeline to a table right here. This is going to show up as a table. We can also see this as a forecast, but really I never play around with this. And I personally always leave this as the pipeline view. We can add new deals to this section by clicking on add deal in this top right corner. We can go up and add a contact that we added in earlier. We can then add a related account or the company they work for, the deal type, deal name, how much this deal is worth, and then we can select a default deal stage for this to start at. Next, we can go down into conversations and we can connect up an inbox so that we can manage all of our emails inside of Fresh Sales. I just linked up my Gmail right here. And over in this section, this is where we can manage our entire email. So we have any emails that are awaiting response. 
when they get sent to your email, they will be in here. We can then see our overall inbox. So we have some default emails in here. We have an email from Laura. So let's go ahead and click into this. And in this section, this is going to show us the email. Over here on the right hand side, we can see some more information about this contact. And then we can either forward or reply to this email. So in here, I can say thanks for the update, Laura, and then send this email. And just like that, this email has been sent. If Laura replies, it's going to show up in this section right here, and is also going to notify us in the inbox section. We can also see any emails that we have sent. So these are some default and sample emails that have been sent. We then have any emails that have been scheduled, any draft emails, we have a trash section and any email templates. Next, we can go to this analytics section, and this is very similar to the dashboard area. However, we can customize and we can go into a wider range of analytics. For example, we can click into the sales dashboard right here and get an overview of how our sales team is doing. We can go back and go into sales forecast, and this is going to bring up an entirely different menu so that we can take a look at the sales forecast. Finally, let's go into the admin settings and take a look at what we can do on the back end. The most important thing is going to be inviting your team. So we can click into invite team and then enter in the emails of the people we would like to invite. I can enter in this email of one of my team members and then we can also choose to assign a role. So we can choose restricted user, which is going to have the least permissions, sales user, sales manager, and then administrator, which is going to have the most permissions. We can then click on invite now, and this team member is going to receive an email saying that they have been invited by you to Fresh Sales. All they have to do is click through on that email, set up their account, and they will be automatically added to your Fresh Sales team. We can also integrate different apps within this CRM, and there's a lot of different apps that we can integrate with Fresh Sales. If you have a particular app that you are looking for and you would like to integrate, you can use this search bar at the top to search for that app. For example, if I want to connect up Slack, I can simply type in Slack, click on Slack right here, then go through and follow these instructions to set up that specific application. So that is my step-by-step -step tutorial on Fresh Sales. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.